It's taken her two tries, but Angie Craig has been elected the representative for Minnesota's Congressional District here in Egan, and she joins us now to talk about that. Welcome to the program. Thank you, Mike. It's a whole lot more fun to win, I can promise you that. <laughs> well, let's talk about why do you think you won? Why do you think you won this time? Well, you know, I think we had a message that really resonated with voters. I, I spent a lot of time after 2016 talking to folks who had uh, moved over from uh, Obama to Trump and just listening to what they were frustrated about. And what they said is, look, my paycheck's not gone up, but my health care costs have, my daycare costs have, my grocery bill has. So I think we spent the whole cycle really focused on the issues that matters to voter, matter to voters the most. You are you're heading here into the maelstrom of uh, Washington, D.C. <laughs> there is a ton of, of issues that are going to be dealt with, but priorities, where are the priorities going to be for you? Well, uh, I'm going to tell the party that energy and commerce so, is where I'd like to be headed long term. Uh, that's um, not usually where they put a freshman member of commerce, but that certainly is where we're going to be dealing with the nation's health care challenges in the future. Um, I also really, truly believe um, that I have to represent this whole district, not just the suburban part or the exurban part. So I'm going to ask to be on the Ag Committee. Uh, I've already told Colin Peterson uh, that that is uh, one of my top choices, and I really feel strongly that we need to get a farm bill done in this country and that we need to do something to help reward our farmers with a fair price, and we need to focus on opening up new markets. The second thing um, will be around transportation and infrastructure. I met with, uh, tried to meet with every mayor in the congressional district. Uh, hopefully some of them will call me back now. Uh, <laughs> but you know, whether they were Democrats, Republicans, or independents, we have a lot of unmet needs. To get any of this done though, I, in the last couple of years, it's become absolutely clear to me that we have got to pass campaign finance reform. I support something called the Disclose Act, um, which would make it um, a law that super PACs would have to disclose where their funding is coming from. Certainly the way to do it in a perfect world would be to overturn Citizens United, uh, but we don't have enough governor's seats to uh, ratify that, so the next best thing is transparency. Now you mentioned you want to serve the whole district. Your predecessor, Jason Lewis, became, came under uh, fire for not being open, not having town halls. Is that something you're planning to do? I know your colleague, Dean Phillips, is already committed to doing those. Yeah, as part of my government reform package when I was running for Congress, I committed to do at least one public meeting monthly. Um, you know, at least quarterly, we'll do a town hall format where, you know, you do a robust Q&A, but uh, I'll give constituents an opportunity to ask me questions every single month in a public forum. And they won't have to get a ticket or? <laughs> you know, no golden tickets. Okay, all right. Well, let's talk about what you're gonna be heading into here. Uh, our president, Donald Trump, uh, is uh, offering to the Democrats saying, let's talk about infrastructure, because that's one place that we can maybe work together. What do you think about that? I think there are two places we may be able to work with the president. Um, you know, above anything, Donald Trump is a deal maker, and he wants to get things done. And so I think we can work with him on infrastructure. Um, I think he wants to do that. I think Republicans have actually been uh, his uh, problem as president so far. And the other thing I actually think, and you know, maybe I uh, just uh, have too much uh, optimism here, I actually think we can, we can stabilize health care. Democrats can move forward with some of the things that uh, we've talked about, like adding a reinsurance program under the ACA, things like uh, potentially opening up Medicare, or at least opening up Medicare to um, negotiate prescription drug pricing in this country. Again, I, you know, the president isn't going to want to sit there and get nothing done. And the only way he is going to be able to sign legislation is by working with Democrats. And the Republicans, though, uh, in Congress, I mean, they, a lot of them ran away from health care saying this is, we want to destroy Obamacare. They came back this time. They said, well, we, we, we're, we're not against pre-existing conditions. Do you, do you think there is common ground then that can be worked out here? Well, I think the American people have uh, spoken very loudly to Republicans in the 2018 election on the topic of health care. This was the number one issue that constituents said to me 
everywhere I went, they want me to work on. And it's not just the cost of health insurance, it's how do we actually start to tackle the cost of health care, prescription drug pricing, the, a health care system that's based on volume, not on prevention or outcomes. Uh, so I think the American people, by sending 30 plus Democrats to the U.S. Congress in 2018, they've spoken on health care and they want us to get something done. You said it's much more fun to win. It's much more fun to be in the majority. You're going to be in the majority here. The Democrats will be controlling the House. The House is going to be a check and balance on the president here. How do you see that working? Well, I think that's exactly what uh, a number of independent voters were saying on Election Day. Uh, and I've said all along, if the president has a good idea, like expanding e uh, E15 sales year round, um, that's going to help corn growers in this district. Uh, if he has a good idea uh, and will invest in infrastructure, I'll support it. But if it's going to hurt the people of Minnesota's 2nd Congressional District, I'm going to stand up to the administration on those issues. And, you know, I, I also would stand up, and uh, you can ask me this when I do it the first time, uh, to my own party if I think it's going to hurt the um, constituents of Minnesota, too. Uh, the president immediately warned Democrats, if you start investigating me, I'm not going to play ball with you. Uh, there's been a big push to have some sort of uh, investigation into the president's finances, his tax returns, a lot of things that have been going on that the Mueller investigation has been digging into. How much of that are you going to support if it comes up that the president, uh, there is, there, that there is a need to do that? Well, look, it, you know, it's uh, start with the day after the election uh, with asking um, our attorney general to resign, Jeff Sessions, and uh, the appointment of someone who has not had the advice and consent of the United States Senate. So I will support the U.S. Constitution first and foremost uh, in whatever form or method that uh, needs to be supported. And at the end of the day, um, you know, the president has to understand that, um, you know, we're uh, we're not Democrats first, we're Americans first, and we're going to make sure that uh, everyone abides to the U.S. Constitution. Uh, Donald Trump said that he supports Nancy Pelosi to be the next Speaker <laughs> of the House. Now, I don't know, if you probably want to see who the candidates are, but what does that mean to you when uh, he starts endorsing somebody like that? Well, I think, uh, you know, I actually think that he respects uh, the leader of the Democratic Party and understands that, uh, you know, he's uh, a deal maker and that maybe he can make some deals. You know, at the end of the day, I'm a freshman member of Congress coming in looking at uh, who's running for these various leadership positions. Uh, and so I do want to take a good look at who's running for each of them and then make a decision. I want to see more um, members uh, of the Democratic Party from the Midwest move into leadership. I think. Uh, you know, we need um, uh, to not be in a situation where everybody's from the coast. I do think uh, that that is uh, geographical diversity is very important to me as well. Mitch McConnell uh, cautioned Democrats against what he called presidential harassment, which was uh, what the Republicans did, and they called it impeachment, actually, at that time, mm -hmm. uh, with Bill Clinton. Uh, if this subject comes up, what are you going to do? Well, there is an independent investigation being led by a former Republican, former head of the FBI named Robert Mueller. And I do believe that um, it would be inappropriate to use the I word in any former sense. And I actually think it's inappropriate for any Democrat to use it um, because we don't know what the results of the uh, investigation into uh, a foreign power trying to influence a U.S. election. So I think we have to look at the results of that investigation. Um, and if there is any attempt by the acting attorney general or anyone else in the administration uh, to hide the results of that investigation from uh, Americans, uh, I believe we do have a responsibility as Democrats to stand up and, and do everything in our power, power to make sure that doesn't happen. All right. Angie Craig, you've been very generous through your time. Congratulations again on your victory. And uh, we'll, we'll see you in Washington, D.C. Thanks so much.